to Vlogtober 2023. I don't know how many years this marks me doing Vlogtober or how many years since the first year I did Vlogtober, but I'm so excited to be back and I think it's going to be a real good one. I am really, really looking forward to it and I am so thankful for all your kind and lovely messages and your excitement about Vlogtober this year um, since I've been mentioning that I'm going to do it. It has really energised me, so yes welcome i've got a lot of ideas and things that i want to do this month in life which i will take you along with me for hopefully we can expect some house content this month i'm hoping that uh, we might see some kitchen action but apparently there's a mezzanine bookshelf being made <laughs> so um not what I was expecting, so goodness knows, but I'm hoping we'll see some kitchen action. I've got a big task this month, which is that my mum wants to have her books over at her new house. Um, in case you are suddenly tuning in and you haven't tuned in for the last few months and you're wondering where I am, I am not in my new house. Um, I am in my mum's old room in our normal house, our home, because she moved out a few months ago to go and live at her new place. Um, this place is going to get sold, so we are on a bit of a time limit <laughs> here, um, and it would be good if we could move into our house. But anyway, so she wants her books from the downstairs bookshelf, the big one, um, to be moved to her new house, because we have more than enough books here to fill those bookshelves for kind of staging and to make them look pretty for when we have viewings of this house, etc, etc. So whilst I'm not putting them in my new house, I will be moving some books around this month and I'm really, really looking forward to actually doing that project. To be honest, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a bit hefty, but um, yeah, I want to bring some books back that I've got at the farm that have just kind of been sitting around that I thought I wouldn't be able to kind of have until we moved into our house. So I'm just very excited. So that means a farm visit is on the cards for sure. I've been doing my makeup a little bit differently kinda, so I'm gonna take you through that. I've gotta rearrange the wardrobes and put some of my like autumn winter stuff in this room um, and move some of the summer stuff out. There's lots of reading to be done, of course. Maybe we'll do some like autumnal book recommendations and stuff at some point. For those of you that do like the bookish content, I'd really like to finally properly kickstart doing some more movement and exercise. Um, since we came back from holiday, I haven't managed to get into the routine yet, so I would like to take you along with that with me this month. Um, we are also sort of almost finished weaning, um, and I've definitely felt, I think, some of the hormonal changes that have come with that, but we're not like quite there yet. I don't know, we can talk about that at some point as well, um, weaning from breastfeeding. So, so much to bring you along with, and I can't wait. I've been starting to get into the cosy mood. It's still quite warm the last few days. Um, I am cheating a little bit, it's not the 1st of October for me today, hence why you're seeing this video. I'm in the October spirit, okay? Um, but yeah, so it's actually been quite sunny and warm um, the last few days. But anyway, I need, I, the first thing I want to do <laughs> is take all these necklaces off um, because they've got so tangled to the point that they've begun to strangle me. I truly don't know where to begin. I did a little TikTok video recently and I put it on reels as well, I think of me doing these necklaces. So if you've watched that, there's nothing new here. But I will take you through what I was wearing. Oh, that's the big ones off. Okay, I think we may have a big tangle of necklaces here. So plans for today, I have got a meeting um, and I'm gonna have lunch, I think, during my meeting um, at my management's office. So I'm looking forward to that, getting out of the house. As I say, it's a little bit sunny outside at the moment. Um, and then I have got lots of admin to do. Our nanny went away last week and into this week. Um, so we've been a little bit off and there's some things I need to catch up on for sure. So probably have a little bit of laptop time and I really need to read the book club pick because um, our meetings are coming up this Sunday. So must make some time for that as well. Possibly might have to do some of that tomorrow though. We'll see how we go today. So yeah, let me sort through these necklaces, see which ones I want to put back on. One I always wear, my little Laura Lee eye. Um, I wear this one because it's nice and short and it kind of sits around my neck nicely. So I'm gonna definitely put this one back on. 
Um, I was, do you know, I've had so many compliments recently about these Laura Lee earrings, which as you know, if you've been following me for a long time, <laughs> I have been wearing for many years um, and I'm still getting in real life IRL compliments about them. They're so beautiful. I think Laura Lee often does a sale remember if it's pre-Christmas sometime. So keep your eyes peeled because they really are the most beautiful earrings. And I was wearing a matching necklace, but I think I'm gonna switch it out. My Laura Lee wax seal necklace, the long one actually broke recently. So I really need to go and get that fixed. Um, I was leaning down over a, I think it's like an air purifier unit that's hanging around the house. And I kind of stood up and the necklace was left in the kind of grate and it just broke. So, I mean, that was quite the forceful movement from me, so I can kind of understand, but I was very sad that it broke. Um, but I always wear my Inez coin. They actually still make these. I think for a bit they came off the website, I'm not sure, but it's just a little coin that says Inez on it. I can't resist wearing one more Laura Lee because I just saw this in my collection. It's this very cool like spiky chevron. It's really, it looks really unusual and cool on. So we're gonna pop that one on. It's not the best outfit to kind of show you these, but I can't resist putting my chunky gray frog chain back on. I switched out to the heart pendant a few days ago. It's like a flaming heart, very cool. Breaks up the kind of delicacy of the Laura Lee pieces. And I'm gonna keep this Monica Vinader chain on as well. I just like the contrast with the chunky silver. I think they look really cool together. You might not be able to see, but the chains on the Laura Lee necklaces are actually gold. Um, but the kind of pendants themselves are kind of like a silvery tarnished color. So we're mixing metals. Right, that's my necklaces sorted. I think I'm gonna do some emails while I wait for my time to leave. reminded because I was just logging it in my little film log thing because I'm a real nerd. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit later this month because I have been logging my films and my books in an Airtable spreadsheet type thing and loving it. So I can take you through that if you're interested. But Zach and I watched Marcel the Shell with Shoes on last night on Sky Cinema and I loved it. I teared up a couple of times. I really remember Marcel the Shell from YouTube and so it was a real throwback. Um, but if you don't know, it's kind of like a stop motion mockumentary about this little shell with shoes on. Um, and I don't know how it manages to elicit emotions, but it does. It was very kind of sweet, um, enjoyable to watch. And it's about this guy who rents out this Airbnb and discovers Marcel living there. And then Marcel tells him about how he has lost his whole family, basically. Um, and Dean, who is also the director of the film helps Marcel find his family again. And it is very sweet, just beautifully done and so impressive. Stop motion always awes me. I watched another stop motion film recently called My Life as a Courgette and I'm just always awed by the sheer amount of work that goes into, into it. So yeah, it's currently available on Sky Cinema. Let me know if you have watched it. I would love to know your thoughts. And that's my Sky Cinema Club pick for this month. You all know I've been working with them for a few months, picking out some of my favorite movies. They also had a couple of other Sky Cinema films come out in September, including God is a Bullet and Knock at the Cabin. Um, and you can find links to all of the trailers and everything down below. They also always have glorious pop-ups and collections of films. And currently on there they have anti-heroes, which includes Pulp Fiction, Taxi Driver, Promising Young Woman, loads of good films on there and they're all available at Sky Cinema. But anyway, let me get back to my emails now. Okay, my loves. Nope. Yep. Am I in shot? <laughs> it's my full outfit in shot? I hope so. So this is what I'm wearing today. Very simple. I really want to wear a jacket. I feel naked without one, but I just know the minute I step outside I'm going to be way too hot. So we're sticking with the jumper for now. I've got my Prada boots on, frame jeans, a Free People jumper from a set that I also like wearing as a set, but also like wearing this on its own. Simple white tee underneath. Bag choice, fully dictated, fully dictated by the size of my book. So yeah, that is me. Um, I'm going to head off to my meeting now. 
I thought I was very much on time, but if I want to get a coffee, I'm worried. I'm, I'm now running a little behind. I think we'll be okay. You know your rings feel like constrictive. I've started to find that as I get older, like there comes a point in the day when I need my rings off. I don't know for certain, but I think my water retention has just been so high in the years that I've been breastfeeding. And I noticed the other day that my hands looked a little bit like they used to uh, a couple of years ago. And I saw that as a sort of reflection of my changing hormones. Um, I last week was feeling quite emotional so I talked a little bit about how we I think are on the road to basically completely weaning but big sleep update Ines has of course it didn't happen last night for the first time in a little while but been sleeping through till about seven ish most nights which my loves was unheard of like unheard of especially towards the start of the year, you know, she would wake up two or three times a night for feeds, sort of minimum, like every few hours. Her longest stretch would maybe be like five hours at the beginning of the night and that was it. Um, and then I would be like bed sharing with her. I've been sleeping in my own bed until about 7 a.m. most days. I haven't wanted to talk too much about it because I didn't want to jinx it. But sorry, I'm just like completely undressing. Another thing is that when I get off the tube, I have to change because I just feel gross <laughs> um, to take my outside clothes off. Because everyone just constantly, look how much shorter I am without this Prada boots on, let me take you down a second. Does everyone just constantly think of Tube Girl when they're on the tube these days? I mean, the self-confidence, unreal. Anyway, I truly, truly, truly never thought we would get to this stage with Inez. When you're in it, it feels so unending, like it will never, never change. But yeah, as I was explaining in my Q&A video, I just started shortening her night feeds because they were getting to be like half an hour and I was just, I'm not one of those people who can sleep while she feeds. So it was driving me a little crazy. So I would like shorten it way down, I'd communicate with her. I'm gonna do two minutes of milk and then back to sleep. Um, and she sort of took it quite well. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I just sensed it was time. Yeah, so I think when she realized she wasn't getting like long feeds in the night, she cut down on the feeds in general. So we were down to like one a night. And then, yeah, recently she's been cutting way down. So, but when I get into bed with her at seven, I do try and make her sleep for a couple more hours, <laughs> which I know must sound a little crazy to those of you who have early rising toddlers. We've always done it like this because she's always had a late-ish bedtime. It's just the way this family runs. We all eat dinner together and that's usually around seven. So, and then we do bath time and then we do bedtime. So she's always kind of gone to bed around nine, like sleeping at nine. And because she's never been much of a napper, she's basically dropped her nap. Um, apart from when we were on holiday, I wanted her to stay up later, so we had a nap. And just occasionally she, she seems to really need it and want it quite early in the day. But if she has a nap, she's up so, so late. And she just doesn't seem to super need one. She's a bit more tired when she goes to bed at night. I'm sure that's contributing to her sleeping much better. So anyway, she's really an 11, 12 hour a night kind of girl. So if she goes to bed at nine, that means she's up at nine. And it's usually a little bit before nine anyway, because I have to get her ready for her day. So probably more like 11 hours every night. So yeah, I'm sure that sounds crazy that I make her go back to sleep at about seven-ish. But I'm finding because I'm getting a bit more sleep, I definitely think I'm at the stage now where I will be getting up before her. Before that, honestly, I just couldn't do it. I was just getting such broken sleep in the night for like years. I don't think I'm recovered by any means because I've had years of broken sleep. And as I say, last night she actually did wake up at about three. Yeah, I think I'm at a stage now where I can be getting up and doing things and getting stuff sorted before she wakes up. But yeah, that's our like new routine at the minute. I'm sure it will all change again, maybe for the worse, maybe for the better. It's one of the things, I think that feed, so I feed her at about seven-ish. Um, I think I'm gonna find it really hard to drop that feed because I bet when I drop that feed, she'll be up at that time. 
and um, I don't know, maybe it'll mean she's in bed earlier, but as I say, we kind of struggle to get dinner sorted before seven. So I don't really, I need to make sure she's obviously getting enough sleep. So we'll see, but we're kind of in flux. But so sometimes I'm like desperate to drop those feeds. I'm like, it should be maybe not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Maybe she'll take to it well. It's only two feeds maximum in 24 hours, like a bedtime feed and then like 7 a.m. feed. And then other times I'm like, I don't want to mess with this. We seem to finally be sleeping better. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to change it. I can't be bothered. Maybe it will be a lot of effort. So I'm kind of on this weird, in this weird memory card got full, but um, so yeah, we're in this weird like in between stage where I'm starting to see like changes in my hormones, I think, changes in my body a little bit, like I said about the water retention, but at the same time, and I would like to kind of fully make that transformation I would like my body fully back. It's sometimes I, as I was saying in my Q and A, sort of get strong aversions to breastfeeding. Sometimes I don't care. I've been doing it so long; it just seems like I'm not even paying attention. I don't know. It's a weird one, but um, but then other times I'm just like it's so much easier to kind of continue down this very slow route. So. I don't know, we'll, I guess we'll keep discussing it through October and see how we get on. But yeah, we stopped day feeds as well. It was another kind of boundary I put in place. And she's, she dropped the feed that she usually has at about five when like I get her back from our nanny. And um, yeah, she dropped that feed basically by herself. She just kind of stopped. She's just so busy, like telling me about her day, dancing around, doing whatever, that she sort of stopped remembering to feed. And um, it's because I had been saying to her, I think, and have this 5 p.m. one and then nothing till that time because I just with the daytime feeds have been really driving me crazy so that's kind of where we're at at the moment um I think I got onto that via taking my rings off but anyway I am obviously stripping down <laughs> I'm so hot um and sweaty and gross I'm glad I didn't wear a coat but I should have worn even less I think it's definitely like it's shorts and boots weather but I need to shave my legs um I know one doesn't need to have hairless legs, but I do prefer the appearance of them on me. But anyway, I'm gonna find something comfy to wear and then I'm gonna get back on the laptop for a few hours. I may have recently let the cat out of the bag about yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Touch too early. And therefore we have actually started watching Christmas films. If I watch Christmas films, I mean, we've watched Elf quite a few times now. I'm reluctant to start any of my absolute favorites until November, December. Um, so that's why we've watched Elf so many times. I do like Elf, but not that much, but she loves it. She calls it Buddy. So, yes, and I receive the same questions about Buddy every day. Your daddy mm. treats you pretty nice, Bean. So I'm just doing post-dinner clear-up. I'm eating these last radishes from our crudite table. I don't know if you can see, but I'm absolutely <laughs> covered in Mickey Mouse plasters. Well, band-aids actually, they technically are because um, our nanny brought them back from America <laughs> um, for us to enjoy. But anyway, 
She's called Nina, much rather use her name. <laughs> um, and our builder is called Pete. I feel like those are the main players of our lives um, who you should know the names of. But yes, we had a very nice dinner. Um, I was going to say, oh yeah, this is the time of day when I kind of usually would, this is one of those times of day when I stick an audiobook on usually. I have traditionally been using Audible, but I have recently branched out into Scribbid, and I would kind of like to make the move over there. They don't have like absolutely everything I want, and I also use Libby for the library, but I'm currently listening to Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Suns, which is about the Great Migration in America. Um, essentially huge numbers of the black southern population moving north throughout the 20th century, particularly like in the first half, I think. And it is, of course, absolutely devastating in many respects as to kind of Jim Crow um, America. And it's a hard listen on that basis, but it's wonderfully done for a non-fiction. I think Wilkerson interviewed loads of people, but particularly bases her narrative around three people. And just that element of like good storytelling comes into it and I think really gets her points across more effectively. So it's a really, really good piece of non-fiction. Um, I've had it on my shelves for ages. I'm so glad of a little bit of a push to read it slash listen to it because we're doing it for our reference section, mini book club on Patreon. So yes, that is what I would kind of usually be doing. But yeah, as you can see, I'm trying to get Inez more involved in sort of cleaning up, but also at the same time, want her to go to bed on time. So sometimes it doesn't work out with her toys, but there are things she does really love helping with, um, which I'm making most of while she still does. In case you didn't know, by the way, those are the bookshelves I was talking about earlier that we're gonna kind of clear off and then refill with books from upstairs, books from the farm. Um, but this is the Pride and Prejudice that I'm currently reading. So I believe this might be my stepdad's or my mum's, I'm not sure. It is an old Folio Society copy, which is funny because the Folio Society sent me a gorgeous copy of Book of the New Sun recently, which I can show you in a different video, just in case you did miss it on Instagram, TikTok, everywhere else I posted it. But yeah, I believe this one is from 1957. It's got all the nice kind of prints in it. And I did feel, I did feel maybe I was doing too much on the tube earlier um, reading this there, but it is the copy I read when I was 10. So I knew I had to read this particular copy again. My, the only copy I own is out at the farm, so yes. Um, but I rewatched the 2005 film recently and adored it. Not recently, just like a couple of nights ago, because we're doing this one for Books on Film mini book, mini book club, and I adored it. I just love it. It's not as good as the book, I don't think, in terms of like the witticism of it, the life. I just think Austen is unparalleled, the novel format. You can do a lot more on that front with it, but I think it was a very solid adaptation and enjoyable in its own right as well. Okay, ignore our ironing piles and all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna show you one of my favorite toys that I've got in it, which you've seen probably a little bit in this video. Now, to be fair, I think this only kind of works if you have like a good space to use it very often. It obviously works wonderfully well on this concrete. I think it would work in lots of different scenarios, like if you had a really long, like a big driveway or something. I don't know, um, or like you could, t you could take it to the park, it's a little bit cumbersome and big, like it's quite big. But anyway, it is called a Diddy car. And let me show you. <laughs> so basically you like move the steering wheel like this and it moves forward. Some sort of physics that I don't <laughs> fully understand. You can see because I'm riding on it that um, it has like a weight limit, I wanna say of like 100 kilograms or something. So like, Everybody can ride it, parents included. I ride on it with Inez a lot. Um, Zach's been on it, everybody's been on it. So yeah, it's one of those that I think she'll get a lot of use out of for a long time, like probably into her tweens even. I also imagine we might have to buy more than one at some stage in the future so that races can happen and stuff. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. I just love how it's like got some sort of dynamism. So kids can move along themselves, but also does she enjoy just using her feet to propel it along really, really, really fast, like scarily fast? 
yes so but she has she can do it the um, proper way as well and you can go pretty fast in this especially as I say on this like smooth concrete floor so if you think it would work for you I think this is such a good present I think it was about 80 pounds so not really expensive not super cheap either but I know Christmas is coming up so I like it for a six or seven year old this would also be fun. I think my plans for the evening are to just finish up some bits and then try and plow on with Pride and Prejudice because I am not as far along with it as I would like. Might try and get that finished in the next couple of days. I'm going to dedicate a whole day to the fawn tomorrow so we can chat about the fawn then and have a little like reading vlog. I'm going to remove all my plasters. I kind of fancy having a bath. I haven't had a bath for ages. We'll see. Um, Inez has kind of since Indy has moved out now so Inez has taken over that floor because Indy and Inez used to live in adjacent rooms so now Inez tends to have her baths in Indy's old bathroom which means my old bathroom is free of bath toys for baths because for, for a while there I just found the sight of the bath toys so overwhelming I just didn't like having a bath at all so I know that's it's silly and frivolous but alas it was me so maybe I'll have a bath even <laughs> I'm just waiting for my bath to run, um, sitting in my old room. It is a bit funny coming up here actually. Now that we really like don't spend all of our time up here, it is always lovely. Sometimes when I've had a stressful morning or whatever though, I'll come up and just be in this room with all my books. <laughs> it's very relaxing, it has such a bookish smell to it in here. It really does smell like a library or like a bookshop or something. I love it. And that's the worst thing about having moved downstairs. I really miss my books. That's part of the reason why I'm so excited to move some of them downstairs. Might seem like a kind of useless task to arrange them on a shelf. They'll probably only be on for a few months. Obviously, as I said earlier, it's kind of for viewings, but also at least they're going downstairs. Like I said, when we moved into mom's room, like at least it's kind of like they're slowly moving out of the house. They're moving in the right direction because um, they're gonna have to come downstairs sometime. And also for those few months, they will provide me with joy. So Innes is in bed. I'm very excited for my bath. My hips really hurt. I kind of feel like an old lady saying that, but yeah, they really hurt. Um, I've just had a bit of a stressful couple of weeks and I feel like I'm carrying it all in my hips. Like I'm very tight, very painful. So I'm hoping that this bath will sort me out. I kind of wish I could watch Real Housewives of New York in the bath, um, which I've been really enjoying. I really like the new cast. I've seen some mixed reception of them, but I think it was exactly what Real Housewives of New York needed. But I'm gonna make more progress with um, Pride and Prejudice. And I'm also looking forward to that too. Editing me, just hopping here and saying that in the next clip, I talk a little bit about Christmas and being a parent at Christmas. So if you have little ones in the room, turn me off. The Christmas thing, um, I'm sorry, cause I know it's too early. Like I've, now I'm an adult, I really try and wait until, or I did used to try and wait until kind of November, December before getting excited about Christmas. But yeah, I I explained it to, to Ines the other day and I really didn't expect it to kind of take with her, like for her to be particularly interested. I was sort of prepared for another Christmas. I should have known to be honest, she's two and a half now, so she's pretty with it. I shouldn't have underestimated her. I sort of expected another Christmas where she like, maybe was a bit more excited than last year, but still didn't really know what was going on. But she has really taken to the whole story of Christmas really, really well. I think she is super keen on getting a bike. Does she need another thing on wheels? Questionable. To be fair, riding a bike is a proper, proper skill and it's a skill that I do not have. <laughs> um, well, I do have it. I can ride a bike, but I'm not very proficient and it definitely annoys Zach um, and it annoys me too. I would like to be better on a bike. I learned relatively late. I want to get her a balanced bike, which is the new thing. No stabilizers. The reason I'm sitting on my bed, by the way, sorry, I get so distracted <laughs> when I start talking. Let me continue with the bike. Um, but yeah, so I want to get her a bike, even though she's got a lot of things on wheels. But anyway, so yeah, she's super keen on the concept of a bike. So I said she's getting one for Father Christmas, bring her one. Yeah, I think that might be what's keeping the, the excitement going. Um, I sort of hope that when she's out of her elf phase, maybe we can transition to pumpkins for a bit. 
and then we can come back to Christmas at some later date because three months uh, in toddler terms is like a lifetime. She'll be like a whole new person by December 25th. Um, so I definitely have introduced it way too early. I should have, I should have gone with the Halloween thing. To be fair, we don't do much for Halloween here. Like it's not a big, it's not a lot of trick or treating, trick or treating in my area. So it's hard for me to like get her excited about it. I also don't feel like there's many like appropriate like media or I guess there must be some good books maybe I need to go and search for some good books for her um which are kind of part of the spirit of the season I do I like the I like to commemorate these things with her because I think it's just nice for the passing of time um and like the seasons and I don't know it's just a nice thing to do together I feel like I've missed the boat on Halloween <laughs> she's not that interested she is excited to pick pumpkins um, she's been talking about pumpkins a little bit, but yeah, we've seemed to have skipped straight to Christmas. Um, but anyway, the reason I'm sitting on the bed is because spider season has begun in this house. Um, we saw a big one in our bathroom the other day and scared the living daylights out of me. I was really good last year. There were a couple living up here and I think I was really good. I managed to live with them until they went back to wherever they came from. Yes, this one in the bathroom was like crawling all around the floor, like going near my feet and it was like way too much for me. I really, really try. Ines is not scared of spiders at all so far, which is amazing. She literally will pick them up, which I have to try and stop her from doing because obviously she's not very gentle. And I really try and swallow that fear. I'm really trying to transform that fear within myself, not be scared myself, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I was gonna sit on the floor and like film this segment, but then I, that hence the weird, weird, weird angle, um, because then I got scared that a spider would crawl out towards me, which is what happened the other day. It was terrifying. So, spider season is most definitely upon us. What happened to me the minute I turned the camera off? That's my spider. <laughs> it was a small one, to be fair, like a very small one, but this is what I'm telling you, especially because I feel like these rooms are less occupied than they were. And people aren't up here all the time. I feel like the spider's gonna take over. So now I've scared myself. I'm gonna have to like check the bath area very thoroughly before I get in.